This is Eugene Henrikovich. I'm the laptop screen doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Today we have a HP Mini 1103 netbook computer that has a damaged laptop screen, and we're going to show you how to replace a cracked laptop screen on a HP Mini 1103 netbook computer. Okay, uh, this one is a little bit different from most other laptop or netbook computers in the way you in the procedure that you use to replace the screen. And also, there is one other problem with this laptop is nowhere does it say what the model number is. It just says HP Mini in the front, and in the back behind battery, it just says HP Mini. Now, uh, this model came out in 2011, and before that, there was the HP Mini 110 and the HP Mini 210, and they would say 110 or 210. This one just says HP Mini, and the only way you can get the model number is from the box itself that it came in. So if you bought your laptop computer netbook in 2011 or later, and it just says HP Mini, it's probably the 1103, and it also if it looks like this. Okay, so let's get started. Before we do anything, we want to remove the battery. And there's two levers on the bottom. One that unlocks it, where you see the orange unlock sign, that means it's unlocked. And the other one, you slide to the right and take the battery out. Okay, like so. You just slide it out. And we put the battery to the side. Okay, with most laptop and notebook computers, you um, there's some screws on the bezel, plastic bezel covers the screen. You take those off and you snap the bezel off. This one is different. You have to take some plastic parts off the hinges first before you can snap the bezel off. So we'll start with that. Uh, let's go over the tools we're going to use today. Uh, we're going to use a PH1 uh, electronic screwdriver. PH stands for Phillips, and 1 stands for the screw head size. We also have a PH0 screwdriver. We have a hobby knife or exacto knife with a pointed blade to remove any screw covers and a pair of metal tweezers to remove uh, any screws that are stuck. I also have a small flathead screwdriver and we might use that to pry some stuff off, but most likely you will not need the screwdriver for this job. Okay, so the first order of business, once you remove the battery, there's two screws that are exposed on each side. There's one here, you can kind of see it in the video, and there's one here. So first order of business is we remove these two screws. And for that, I'm using the PH0 screwdriver, but you can probably use the bigger PH1 screwdriver. So remove these two screws. And then once you do that, you open up the laptop and we can snap off these plastic parts that are right here. So let's see if we can get a close-up. Let's see if we can carefully snap it off. Okay, so we took this plastic part off. Since this one's on the left side, I'll put this one's on the put this one on the left. And we're gonna snap off this plastic part now. Almost there. And we're going to put this one on the right. So I'm putting all the parts in the order in which I removed them. Okay, the next order of business is there's two hinge covers. So we snap the two hinge covers off. And for that, I'm going to use my flathead screwdriver to help me along with that. You snap it off and you remove it. Put the left one on the left. And the same. Like this, put the right one on the right. There's a little plastic piece that came off the hinge assembly. I'm going to put that back on. I don't think it's an important piece, but we're going to put it on anyway, so it goes on like so. 
Alright, next there are some new screws that are exposed. They're right here and right here to remove another plastic piece. So we use our PH1 screwdriver and remove those screws. One and two. Okay, almost there. I just had some coffee, so I'm a little bit jittery. My apologies. Coffee is my weakness, as with many people. Alright, and it comes off. So, and the plastic piece that the screw holds comes off too. So, this one's on the left, so we're going to put it on the left, and we're going to take off this plastic piece, like so, and this one's on the right, and we'll put it on the right with this screw. Okay, now that the plastic pieces on the bottom of the hinge assembly are removed, we can remove the screen bezel. And what I like to do is put my fingertips on the screen side, and gently start lifting up the screen bezel, and listen for the snapping sounds. So once you hear snapping sounds, that's a good sign. The screen bezel is coming off and work your way around the screen. Uh, if you get stuck on the corners, leave the corners alone for the time being, and we'll come back to them. Okay, so I snap off as much as possible without the corners, and this, what I like to do is put my, one of my fingertips on the outside and kind of pull outward and lift the corners up, and most of the time that works. And that worked here, I just, I just pulled outward towards myself and lift it up, and it came off. Okay, so we keep moving, and with this screen bezel, it's a little bit unusual. Most of the time, once you snap the screen bezel off, you just remove it, but it, this screen bezel is trapped in the hinge covers, so we just leave it there. We just put it down like this. So this part is the tricky part. Okay, so once we leave the screen bezel there, and then we have to remove the screen with the metal mounting brackets on the screen and there's a reason why and I'll show you in just a little bit. So there's three screws next on each side that you have to remove. There's one, two, and three, and one, two, and three. So let's remove those. Once you remove that, the back of the screen, the plastic part behind the screen is going to fall back, so that's okay. That's what we want. Two. This is my second attempt at this video. This is kind of a complicated laptop. Okay, so the whole screen assembly falls back like we expected. So we do the same thing on the other side. And then you're going to keep this set of screws in its own pile. like so. So there's six screws total that's going to be in this file. Okay, so carefully lower the screen assembly once you remove all the screws. Okay, next we're going to separate the screen from the back, the plastic, back plastic piece. Make sure nothing's getting in the way, like so. And there you see, we can almost do it you see that the video cable has a metal foil piece that's trapping it and also has a, some adhesive to the back. So we want to free the video cable from the back of the screen so that we can work on it easier. Okay, and we finally did that. Okay, and for the sake of the video, I'm going to de-thread the video cable so we can move the screen out of the way. Okay, so the reason I removed the whole screen assembly with the metal mounting brackets is because there's some aluminum foil that wraps around the screen and also that wraps around the metal brackets. So what we're going to do next is 
we're going to remove the connector on the back of the screen so we can then remove the brackets from the old screen. So I'm going to gently lift up the aluminum foil where the connector is housed. And then there's another adhesive tape on top, which we're going to remove, like so. And we're going to lift up the back, and then we're going to just pull the connector out, like so. And now that the screen is free from the laptop assembly. Okay, before we dispose of the screen, we need these metal mounting brackets that are on the side. We need to free them from the screen. In order to do that, there's two screws on each side, so we're going to remove that. And you can use, I'm actually going to use the PH, the PH1 screw for that, one. And Two. And once we do that, we free the metal bounding brackets from the adhesive tape. And since this one's on the right, looking from the back, we're going to put it on the right. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. One. I'm running out of space here and two so and we lift up the metal mounting brackets and we remove read from the adhesive tape like so and like so okay so now we have the screen free there's some aluminum foil on the back we're not going to remove that because we don't really need it for the new screen. There's aluminum foil right next to it, so I'm not quite sure why HP put another piece of aluminum foil there. And usually what I do at this point is I tell you what the screen model number is, but the problem is there's aluminum foil on it, and once you remove the aluminum foil, the sticker with the screen model number is going to be removed also. So it's impossible to tell from the model number from the screen. Okay, I knew this was going to happen, so I already have another screen that looks exactly like it. has the connector in the same place, the exact same size, and 100% compatible with this screen. And I'm going to read you the model number off of this one, so you know what to look for. So the model number is B101AW03, so when you do your internet search or whatever, Look up B101 AW03. Okay, one other thing to notice that the screen I have, it's glossy, and the screen that came with this laptop is matte. It's got a rougher finish. So with netbooks, you can never tell it can be the exact same model, and they'll have matte on one and glossy on the other one. So uh, if you really prefer one or the other, you got to specifically state what you prefer. Otherwise, you'll get either random, natural, or glossy when you order it. Okay, we as screen surgeons also sell this screen. And what you get with us is free email technical support when you do the procedure to replace the screen on your laptop. And we also have a compatibility guarantee. So guarantee the screen will ship that we ship will be compatible and also uh, we ship all over the world so if you're not in the United States you can still order from us and we'll ship it to you. So to order the screen from us go to www.screensurgeons.com then on the bottom click buy a screen and then when you click there there will be a short form for you to fill out and there you'll give us your email and your laptop model number and we'll send you the link to the right screen. Okay, in addition to the screens, we also sell the toolkit that you, with all the tools necessary, that you need to do the procedure. And the toolkit's also available on our website. Okay, once you get the new screen in, I would not 
remove this metal foil and put it on the new screen. I don't know. I personally do not think it's necessary because there's another metal foil right behind there. If you want, you can use this metal piece and put it on top of the connection once you connect it. And I'll show you how to reconnect it quickly because I see people having trouble with that. So when you slide the connector in, you'll feel two clicks that shows that indicates that the connector is engaged. In the in the gap, you should not see any you should not see any space in the gap between the two connectors. The seam should be tight. There should be no gap in the space between the two sides of the connector. So pause the video right there and make sure your connection looks like this when you reconnect your screen. Okay, so once you reconnect your screen, you install the... I'm going to take it off again. You install the metal mounting brackets with the right and the left, like this, like I showed you. And then you thread the video cable back into the holders that are holding the video cable. Put the whole screen assembly in place. Then lift it up so it matches up with the hinges and put the three screws on each side in place. And then you snap the bezel on. That's right here. And then you start putting the plastic pieces back on around the hinges like I showed you at the very beginning. And you should be done. Okay, this is a fairly complicated procedure. On a scale of 1 to 10, I gave it a 6 or 7. So if, make sure you want to do this yourself before you start because it's more complicated than other laptops. But with a little patience and uh, some good instructions, you should be okay. Okay, uh, my name is Eugene Panrikovich. I'm the Laptop Screen Doc, and the name of the website is www.screensurgeons.com. Thank you very much, and good luck.